E.A. Bakianeri once said, There are so many problems to solve on this planet first before we begin to trash other worlds. Keep this in mind as we discuss today China's giant steps in establishing its permanent space station. My name is Dr. David Wararu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. We now have Patreon, and if you like our videos, please consider supporting us through Patreon. The link is at the bottom. David, as you and I have discussed many times, mm -hmm. China is moving ahead rapidly in terms of transportation, bullet trains, electric cars, G5, G6, uh, you name it, and they're there. And now they even have some major chip manufacturing in the works that looks like it might work. And they've just put up piece number one of the space module that is a more or less permanent space station, 10, 15 years is permanent, and 11 missions later, they're going to have a three-piece up there, and they're going to have people living in space. What do you make of all that? Well, that is a, that is a giant step, uh, Ross. To me, it's an indication of uh, their progress, the indication of how far they've come and have, how quick they've come for them to reach that within, the, what, 30 years, 35 years? That's, that's, that's phenomenal, I would say. So. And yes, indeed, they did launch last week the first module and of, of three, as you mentioned. And, and that's going to be their permanent uh, space station there uh, after being kicked out by the U.S. So. You know, it's astonishing that the United States Congress actually forbade them from being part of the International Space Station. Actually, it did because it passed the legislation a couple of years ago banning the Chinese from access to the ISS. So in response, China said, sure, we'll, we'll build own. our own. <laughs> so why bother with the Americans anymore? And by the way, in the meantime, let's go to Mars. Let's go to the moon. They're really arriving yeah. in terms of space technology. Uh, well, that's correct. They wanted to have what the West had, uh, what the West has basically, and more. I had a chance to look at some pictures of the inside of that module. I mean, it is incredible. High tech. You, I mean, it was very, very impressed by how well it was designed and so forth. You mean that they're putting that million engineers and scientists that graduate from universities every year to good use? They are indeed. <laughs> They are indeed, Russ, and, and, and it's a testimony, that's a proof to how far they've come in such a short time. So, and the idea for them with this space is, uh, uh, this space station, is that, the, uh, as you mentioned, the, so the ex beside the exploration of Mars and so forth, they are also considering building new space vehicles. They're also considering building a telescope, the equivalency of Hubble. And they are also considering having their own GPS. They're not going to oh, depend wow. on Starlink. Well, they're going to have their own. So you can just see uh, where they are going with all this, and rightly so, because they have the means now to do it. They have the scientific knowledge, they have the funding to do it, and they have the drive and determination. And the Chinese Communist Party is there saying it's part of our plan. Yeah. Because they're always working from a... Plan. plan. That's correct. There's always a strategy in place. You know, it's interesting watching how the, how the Western media is treating this because the focus has not been on, hey, look what they did. It's, hey, their space junk is going to fall on us. It's going to fall on our heads. Mm -hmm. What if it falls on one of our cities? Oh, yeah, you're referring to the <laughs> rocket that the city has been. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that too, Ross, because the focus is so negative about when we know, you and I know, and I hope you do as well, that any time you send something out to space, there will always be a debris out there. And it's constantly falling on us. Yeah. And you don't hear about it. No, we Matter don't. Fact, was it Washington or Idaho? It was in Washington State. Yeah, that's they correct. Had some, it, it, and it, it didn't kill anybody, but it fell right on one of our states. That's correct. And we didn't hear much about it, and life goes on. So. Oh, but the but the Chinese, that's big news. I know. That's that's kind Turn of on the, the news, and it's the, on every broadcast. It's the double standard, shall we say. So. You know, 
Some people suspect there might be a military application to this. Oh, that's an interesting point, Ross. You know, uh, as a former military myself, I can see the application to that. But this is no different for China than, than what it was for the United States. Remember back in the 80s, Ronald Reagan used to talk about Star, Star War. Wars. Yeah, well, in a reference to the military dimension to it. My belief, and this is my opinion, that China's build up for the, its own space stations is also a reaction to the U.S. creation of Space Force. So if there is the creation of Space Force, that means there is a military application to that. And Ch why, why should China exclude that aspect to it? Second thing is that for China, you can't divorce the military from the technology. It's just the way it works for their system. The, their military will have to have access to the major uh, advancements in technology, and space is no different than that. So, You mean that's different from the United States? <laughs> sort of, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the bottom line to it, Russ, is that, you know, uh, geopolitics on Earth will always be in space as well. If people go, geopolitics is alive and well. Yeah, yeah. So if we have geopolitics on Earth, we're going to have geopolitics in space. And my belief is that you're going to start seeing now, what you're going to start seeing is other countries now wanting to join China in the space project. You don't think India's going to do it, do you? Oh, they do. What about Russia? They do. And, and who else? Who else even, like even the European agencies, they oh, could yeah. consider oh, yeah. that one. So I would not be surprised. Uh, just give it a time once they build. And by the way, just for you to know, they wanted to, China wants to have its own uh, permanent space station ready to go by next year. <laughs> so. And you know, we take a look at the money involved, we start talking a, a budget of $300 billion, you're going, no wonder people are interested in doing it. Yeah, I mean, I mean as you said earlier, and, and, and it was right that they, ha they work from a strategy. Yeah, they don't plan. just, you know, waste money on this or that. You know, there is always a plan. There is always a strategy. And the strategies and plans coincide with, with the vision of where the country wants to go. I mean, you mentioned last time when we talked about, not to change the topic here, but you mentioned about the poverty. Oh, yeah. How it was the raised for, in China, they moved, what, millions, few millions from, from poverty to... Well, Xi Jinping said they raised 500 million people out of poverty. Uh, that's a, I would say that's a big accomplishment. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the World Bank recognized that one. So, so uh, in, you know, in when the, my son and I were in China, we got to see that firsthand, and it was really believable yeah. that they had raised those people out of poverty. Yeah. You know, there's a conclusion to all of this, and that is the space race is on. You're going to see more and more of it. You see the Space Force. You see the, the modules going up. You see the tele... It's on. Expect to see a lot more of it. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other videos. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay informed. Till next time. Bye-bye.